Okay, let's take a look at two different circular motion examples. This first one has a coin that's sitting on some turntable, which is really just a disc, and that is that thing is rotating, right? And so the coin rotates, and what we're given is that the coin has an R value of 0 0.30 meters. And remember, the R value is the distance the coin is from the center of the circle, which basically gives you the radius of the coin's circular motion. And what we're told is that the coin starts to slip at a velocity of 0.5 meters per second. Okay, so as in all of these questions, we probably want to think about the forces acting on this thing. And if we drew a free body diagram, we would end up with this. There certainly is gravity down and a normal force up, right? The turntable or the disc is supporting this coin vertically and gravity is pulling down. Those two things are equal and they're balanced in this case. And there's some inward force, remember, to move in a circle, you must be forced to move in a circle. Objects don't just move in a circle on their own. And so the force in this case that's causing the circular motion is the force of friction. We know that the force of friction is equal to mu times the normal force. We also know that in this particular case, the normal force is equal to mg. And so what we have here is we, we're going to look at this coin's motion and we're going to say that the net force equals ma following Newton's second law. The net force on this thing, again, we're not worried about these two forces. They're balanced and they're in the vertical direction anyways. We're really only looking at the um, centripetal acceleration, right? What's causing this thing to move in a circle? In that case, the only force is friction. So we have mu mg equals m. And then we are going to replace the centripetal acceleration by what we know it's equal to v squared over r and we can notice that the two masses cancel which says that the mass of the coin has no effect on this and then at this point we just know we want to find mu and we know g we know v and we know r and again we know the specific velocity and radius at which it slips so when you solve for this you get a mu which is the coefficient of friction of 0.08 Five, and there are no units. Remember, mu um, is the ratio of these two forces, and so it doesn't have any units. And again, if you put a different coin on this on the same disc, it's going to have a different coefficient. Um, this this thing is going to be dependent on these two surfaces. Okay, let's do another uh, another one. This one we have a rope and we have a ball, and I want to emphasize that this is still horizontal, and that this ball is sitting on a table, right? So the, the ball is still being supported vertically by some table. And I'm just not gonna draw the table because it'll just mess up the picture. But it's still horizontal motion. And what we know is that when we whip this thing around, right? We're whipping this ball around, the tension in the rope is 50 Newtons when the radius is 2.5 meters at a velocity of 20.4 meters per second, right? That's the given information. That's going to help us find something. And now we want to know, well, we want to find the maximum tension um, that can be applied to the situation, okay? And we know that when the string is pulled in, right, you're going to pull the, spr the string in, effectively shortening the rope to a R value of one meter. It's going to speed up to 51 meters per second. And at that moment, it breaks. And we want to figure out that, that when the string breaks, what's that maximum tension? Any more than that, and the string can't handle it. Okay, so what's this going to do for us? Well, the given information, looking at F equals MA, is going to give us the ability to find the mass of the ball. So we have F equals MA, and again, what's causing circular motion? The tension, and there is no, no forces are opposing that. And that's equal to M V squared over R. Okay, so we know that when we're doing this velocity at this, at this radius, then we have that tension. And this information plugging in allows us to find the mass of the ball. And so the mass is going to be 0.3 kilograms. Okay, so that's really all this did is that it allowed us to find the mass. Even though the question didn't ask us to find the mass, we're going to need the mass in order to answer this question. So let's go to the second part of the question. Let's find this maximum breaking tension. And when we whip this around faster and faster and faster, well, this stays the same. We're still looking at the forces. Tension is still the force that causes 
circular motion. Circular or centripetal acceleration, we can still replace it by v squared over r. And if we know that it breaks at 51 meters per second at a radius of 1 meter, and now we know that the mass is 0.3, we can just plug those numbers in and find the tension. And so what you do is you get a tension right around 780 newtons. And again, when that many newtons is applied to the rope, then the rope is going to break. And again, the rope is the force, right? The tension in the rope is the force that makes the ball move into a circle. Okay, so these are kind of two basic uh, circular motion problems that also involve, obviously, Newton's second law. We could have drawn a free body diagram for this one. You know, it would have been the same thing. We had the normal force of the table up and mg down, and those were the same. And again, we have the rope pulling inward on this object. Okay.